Good day. My name is Richard Hart from the Revival Time Assembly. So I want you to stay tuned and listen in as we share this important message with you today. God bless you. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto the disciples, unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, O oh God. We thank you, dear God, that you have brought this word to me to deliver to your people this morning, dear God. And you said in your word that it shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which it was set forth to do. So we pray, dear God, that this word this morning is going to minister to somebody and galvanize this body into action, dear God. In your precious name I pray. Amen. We have been positioned for a purpose. So we have to say that we are what kind of people? A position people. You know, back in 2006 when we celebrated our 50th anniversary, that is what we sought to emphasize, that we are a position people. And I want you all to remember that this morning, that we are a position people. Say that, say that with me. We are we are a position people. God in his divine foresight and wisdom positioned this church to be a beacon of hope in the city of San Fernando. And we are really uniquely positioned in this, in this city. Over the years, despite, despite offers to relocate, we have never moved. We have never moved from this area. And we are now in our own facility. Amen? Because we are a positioned people. We have been set up by God. Normally you use the the, 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 that phrase set up in a kind of negative way. Well, we got set up by God. God set us up here. He has positioned us here to bring hope to this community. Over the years, our church growth has been largely as a result of our evangelistic effort, efforts, and we have utilized a host of different methods. But one thing we have to stress is that even though our methods have changed, and they are going to continue to change because we have to evolve, we have to be relevant. Our message, our message has never changed. And our message will never change. What is our message? Jesus is alive. Jesus saves. Jesus is the answer. That is our message. Right through from growing up in church, right through. This is all I've been hearing. Jesus is the answer. Andrew Crouch sang it years ago. Jesus is the answer for the world today, and it's still relevant. God has indeed positioned us here for a purpose. So my question to you today, in light of all of this, have we realized that purpose? Have we accomplished that purpose that God placed us here for? And I want us to be brutally honest with ourselves this morning. When we look out unto the harvest, and what is the harvest? Our community. The people that we see day to day moving around in this area. When we look out, what do we see? When Jesus saw the multitudes, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. What do we see? What, what does it cause us to feel? 
you know, we would, be, we would be apt to look out and we would see we have a nation in turmoil. We are spiraling, we are reeling under a spiraling murder rate. You know, up to yesterday, the murder rate was 500 plus. Can't remember, 532 or something like that. A lot of other heinous crimes. What is happening in our country? What is happening in our country? People are afraid to go out. Could be one of the reasons our nighttime services have been affected. And I say just one of the reasons. But they prefer to stay in the safety of their own pretty wrought iron prisons, houses. But fear, fear is gripping our land. Fear is gripping our land. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion because they fainted. And they were scattered aboard as sheep having no shepherd. They were just running around like headless chickens. God has a sense of humor. So maybe God saw that we were not going out to evangelize as we should. So, so you know what? I'm going to bring the people to all you. So years ago, Maxi Taxi stand from in the Chanchulian car park where we used to have all our crusades, where they came, right in front of the church, right in front of the church. God say, all well, you're not going, I'm bringing them to you. Hundreds and hundreds of people passing through in front here every day. What have we done? That didn't seem to work. So you know what? Fast forward probably about 15 years. Say, I'm going to try this again. Bring a next set of taxis down here. So we would look on it as a nuisance, but look at it from another point of view. People, the same people that we are supposed to be reaching, they're right in front of the church. On a daily basis, hundreds, thousands of people passing through here. What are we doing? You know, taxis transport people. So we know we have a lot of people passing through in front here. Now this is not something that is to be left up to just the pastors and the leaders. We have to reach these people. We are called to reach these people. Every single person here this morning, every person, we have that responsibility. So we ask, how can I be a part of this soul winning vision? You ask yourself that question. You be challenged to be a part of that. Harvest is plenteous. Plenty people out there, they need the Lord. People are walking around with a sense of hopelessness. We have people who, they look normal. They look normal on the outside. They go to work hungry. They're looking good. They go into the job. They go to work hungry. What are we doing? In the not too distant future, there would be a big project done in this waterfront area. It's called the Waterfront Development Project. And a lot of people may have scoffed about this for years because this project has been on the drawing boards for a very long time. I would say probably about 20 years, 20 odd years. But it has started. It has started, and 
some of the things you may be seeing happening when you come into church, they all form parts of the little puzzle. They are little parts of the puzzle that would go into the big picture. But you know what? When you go to their meetings and you hear about the plans, one of the areas that they are saying would be a part of this waterfront development plan is an area that we mentioned earlier on in the history of San Fernando, the Plaza San Carlos Heritage District. It's going to be a part of this project. And we're going to have things like high-rise buildings that would be for businesses and for residences. There would be a performing arts and cultural center, and I think that would be somewhere across where the bus garage is right now. And in the midst of all of this, what there is going to be, in the midst of all of this, there is a church. What church is that? What church is that? We are here. We are here. They haven't listed us as yet in their plans. But as I said, we are here. And as Dennis Plummer say, we're not moving. Amen? We're not moving from here. So in a very real sense, we are going to become a city church. We are going to be in the heart of the city. A church in the heart of the city, and I would like to say, with a heart for the city. We want to have that, a heart for the city. We must be able to reach out to the people who are going to be in this area. And it, you know there's going to be a lot of people. So we have to reach out to the community as well. We cannot just continue to occupy till he comes. Can't do it. It's more than that. We cannot continue to operate in a state of a peaceful coexistence with what is happening God around us. place us here to be the salt, to be the light. The Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. And that is an act of aggression. We have to take it by force. We are not to put up a defensive shield. We have to take it by force. And we have to continue to be here as a beacon, a shining light of hope in this troubled area. Now, We have, we have the instances where people just come into the church, and I'm telling you about this during the week, people will just come in and ask for help. Not just for financial or food stuff, things like that, but people come here and they want to talk. So we know that we have the presence here, but we need more, we want more. So here's my challenge to you this morning. While we are thankful for the evangelistic efforts of the various groups in the church, we do track distribution, we do outdoor services, we have the waterfront relief, we have the waterfront children. As a church, we need to become more focused and more powerful what are we doing? What are we doing? It cannot be business as usual going forward. So I want to call on the various ministry heads, the intercessors. You all have a very important role to play. A very, very, very important role to play. In 10 to 15 years' time, this entire area 
would be changed if Jesus tarries. Some of us may not be here to see that. Some of the young people coming up, they are the ones going to have to carry this battle. Because change is going to come. But one thing that would not change is our message of salvation. And as I said, things are going to happen, but we are happening right now. We are here in this church. We are positioned here, and we're not moving to go anywhere. So, you know, we sing a song in church sometimes, make me more like thee, Jesus, make me more like thee. Make me more like thee, Jesus, make me more like thee. And what did our scripture say? When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. So let's be like Jesus. Let's be moved with compassion when we see the multitudes outside there running around, looking dazed and confused, looking like headless chickens. The harvest is indeed plenteous. But you know, Jesus said, the laborers are few. The laborers are few. So what do we do? What do we do, RTA? We want to be part of the laborers' crew. And change that from being few to being plenty. We have to be a part of it. And I'm challenging you this morning to do that. Let's do what we are called to do. First and foremost, in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, where Jesus said to go. That is our first commandment. And Jesus' last commandment. Go. Go. This is what we are called to do. Go and teach. Go and reach. Let's go out there and reach people. As I said, cannot be business as usual. Cannot be business as usual. Could you stand with me? Thank you for listening to this message. And as the scripture verse said, when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Let us be like Jesus. Let us be moved with compassion and become one of the laborers in the field. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is plenteous. And the laborers are few. Let's be one of the laborers. Looking forward to seeing you laboring together.